Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Hey there, teens, Trent here. And I just wanted to come in and tell you about having godly music in your life, especially during this time. You see, Elmwood has been closed for some time now, and we've been missing out on a lot. We've been missing out on fellowship, in-person preaching, counseling. But, you see, during this time, we're also missing out on being taught and being admonished. And I believe, from the Word of God, that godly music can fill that void that this whole situation is causing. So, let's read this verse again, and let me explain what I'm talking about. It's Colossians 3.16. Colossians 3.16. Go ahead and read it with me. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So exactly right there, Paul says that a song can teach us. But how can a song teach us? Remember this one? Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day. Pray every day. Remember that one? That song taught you how to grow in your Christian life. How about this next one? Be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. See, I didn't even have to finish it because that song taught you a verse from the Bible. It helped you memorize it. And that's super important. We need to memorize the Word of God. And the song could help you memorize verses. How about this last one? It's the ending part of Rock of Ages. It goes like this. Be for sin a double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Just that tiny part of that song is teaching you a whole lot about doctrine. What is it, what is it teaching you? It's teaching you that the atonement of Christ is your propitiation and justification. Propitiation is the appeasement of wrath. Be for sin a double cure. Save from wrath. What about make me pure? That's your justification. That's you being declared righteous before God. And both of those things were accomplished in the atonement of Christ. The double cure. Just a tiny part of the song taught you that much doctrine. Now, what do I mean by a song admonishing you? First, let's define what admonishment is. Admonishment, simply put, hey, You're going the wrong way, and you won't like what's down that way, so turn around and go that way. That's admonishment. Admonishment is a warning, and songs can warn you. I have a perfect example right here in this hymn book. Let me just read a little bit of it to you. As a child, I foolishly turned God away, not knowing the heartache a sinner must face, but God, in his goodness, has let me return to share with his children this lesson I've learned. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Slowly but wholly take in control. Sin will leave you longer than you want to stay. Sin will cost you far more than you want to pay. This is an admonishment against following sin. It's telling you sin will always have a penalty, and the penalty will never be worth the pleasure. How about this next one? It's almost persuaded. The very last part of that song, it still echoes in my head. Almost almost but lost it's admonishing a sinner you may in your heart be feeling almost persuaded but if you're always just going to be almost persuaded you're going to be fully lost so get fully persuaded and trust christ today it's admonishing you get saved now so those are just a couple examples on how songs can teach you and admonish you And that's why you need godly music in your life, because you need to be taught and you need to be admonished, especially when the church is facing this chaos that is in right now. You need these things in your life. So in the description below, I'll be putting links to songs that I personally love from different colleges, different music groups. I hope you click on them and maybe you'll find your favorite song that will teach you and admonish you. But until then, I hope to see you in church sometime soon and you have a God-blessed day. Take care, teens.